Hey guys, Mike, your host of Craft Beer Storm. How are you today? It's Friday. Do you have plans to go see your brewery this weekend? Your local craft brewery, you gotta go. Get on Google, do a search, local craft breweries. Go visit them. Good places, good people. Good beer for you. And we have craft brew news today, the drama. The, the first story is like, you take a knife and stick it in my heart. <laughs> and these stories are brought by Brewbound. I, I've been preaching this the whole, like, I don't know, since the beginning of the year, since last year when I got my media pass. The Craft Brewers Conference is canceled. Why would it be canceled? The largest gathering of the craft brewing industry professionals has been canceled due to the concerns of the spread of COVID-19, the coronavirus disease. The scam that has been perpetrated by the media to scare people, and now they canceled an awesome conference. With, with a, they plan these things like three years in advance. It's ridiculous. Like They can't even have it again in San Diego. Uh, San Antonio, they have to go, they're going to San Diego next year because they have to plan it like three years in advance crazy stuff now what's going to happen to the town the town is expecting all this revenue it's not going to get it all these people that were supposed to be there flights right hotels just nothing it's just there's nothing good that's coming out of this this scam that's being perpetrated by the media but there you go. There's another event canceled. After days of speculation and major events across the country, canceling and postponing, the Brewers Association today announced the decision to forego holding the 2020 edition of the Craft Brewers Conference and Brew Expo America, as well as the World Beer Cup competition. World Beer Cup competition was supposed to be held as well. That's done every two years, right? which is expected to draw more than 13,000 people to San Antonio from April 19th to the 22nd. And I guess the whole brewing community is like, what the hell? Uh, the BA said in a statement on its website, developments over the past 24 hours have made hosting this year's conference infeasible. It, they're talking like a nuclear bomb has been dropped in San Antonio or something, like developments over 24 hours. What? It's all media crap. And after much thought and consideration, we have made the difficult decision to cancel the 2020 Craft Brewers Conference and Expo America and the World Beer Comp. Last week, they were like, yeah, we're going to do it. You know, nothing's going to stop us. And then they caved. They had to cancel it. In major cities and countries across uh, counties across the country, local officials are banning large gatherings of people in an effort to institute quote unquote social distancing of individuals to slow the spread of the disease. Disneyland also announced it was shutting down. Now social distancing. Don't we have enough of this social distancing? We, everybody looks at their phone and they send a text instead of calling people or meeting them for coffee or something. Send them a text. We need more social distancing. That's all that's what we need, right? Ridiculous. I'm just pissed off. Celebrities such as Tom Hanks. I didn't realize this. Tom Hanks has it. Where where have you been, Tom? Did you go to China? <laughs> as well as Utah jazz stars Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. They must have been to China too. I uh, have all confirmed as testing positive for COVID-19. I have nothing against China. I love Chinese people. I love China. But apparently that's where this whole thing started and... um even the Crap Brewers Conference, all the Chinese uh, distributors pulled out. They weren't going to go. So, I don't know. Don't know. Next story, Ballast Point. Deal closes. Another debacle. <laughs> Constellation brand sale of Ballast Point to an investor group fronted by little-known Chicago upstart beer company, Kings and Convicts, officially closed on Monday. But they have a lot of money behind them. That's why they're a little company, but they have very wise people who have a lot of money behind them. The iconic San Diego craft brewery return to independence and ownership by a craft brewing group that didn't produce 1,000 barrels of beer last year blindsided and confounded industry professionals and media when it was announced early December. 
I don't know what happened with Constellation Brands. In 2015, Constellation Brands paid $1 billion, would it be, for the brand in 2015. Industry sources have pegged the sale of Kings and Conflicts to around $68 million. So they sold it for $0.06 cents on the dollar, $0.07 cents on the dollar, excuse me. That's great. Plus uh, several years of hop contracts. Moving forward, Ballast Point's turnaround starts uh, with adding a sales team, something that the brand didn't have after Constellation <laughs> reorganized the sales structure in 2018. The company is about a third of its way to hiring 45 salespeople, including national chain accounts and on and off premise reps in San Diego. So you have to think, what the hell was Constellation Brands thinking? Who made that decision? There must have been a lot of clever people around pumping it up. It's worth one billion. Who made money on that? You got to think about that, right? I heard. I heard one billion when it was sold. I'm like, what? It's ridiculous. I mean, it was national brand. It was great, good beer, but one billion. I mean, come on. Anyway. Next story, Athletic Brewing Company adds San Diego Production Brewery and closes on a $17.5 million funding round. Here are more clever people. Connecticut-based craft non-alcoholic beer maker Athletic Brewing Company uh, announced today the acquisition of assets of the former Ballast Point Trade Street facility as well as the close of a $17.5 million a Series B funding round. So this is the second time they got money. Athletic Brewing co-founder Bill Schufelt declined to disclose how much the company paid for the assets, but it said it will lease the 80,000 square foot production facility, which does not have a tap room. Athletic Stratford, Connecticut-based facility produced 10,000 barrels in 2019 but the company was hampered by production constraints since last May, Schufeld said. The California production facility will increase the company's capacity tenfold to meet the growing demand. I guess they have a demand. They have this hard, uh, hard seltzer, you know, which is an alternative to beer. Now they have, And they have Michelob Ultra, which is uh, hitting it out of the park, right? Low alcoholic beer. They have no alcoholic beer. So it must taste really good. I haven't had it. But it must be really good if they're selling that much. I think they're going to sell that much. Most non-alcoholic beer I've I've had is just like, bah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is my opinion. Probably a lot of other people too. I have to try it. And last story, Allagash founder Rob Todd advises New England craft brewers it's going to get tough. So Allagash Brewing founder Rob Todd counseled fellow Maine brewers on what he predicted will be choppy waters ahead during last week's New England Brew Summit in Portland, Maine. Rob, if you're out there, I want to have you on, man. I had had your uh, chief brewer on. He's a great guy. I want to have you on. Todd said, we're going to have to work hard to protect what we built. Uh, We just saw how much value we're delivering to communities all over the country. We're going to have to work hard to protect it because I can tell you there's nothing that the big big mega brewers would like more than to take beer back into those big factories, which they're scheming to do. He's also said, one of my big concerns is the last time I went to my local grocery store, I wasn't noticing them adding more coolers, and those seltzers are going are going in a cooler space that was previously occupied by beer. We've worked for 25, 30 years building this beer shelf out, and these seltzers are going in a space. So is it good for beer? You know, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens with this hard seltzer. It's just all over the place. Now, like I said, the Boston Beer Company is, is... They're making more non-beer than beer, right? They're selling a load of it, especially Truly's nuts. White Claw's dominating, and then Truly's number two. In Allagash's quarter century of existence, its distribution footprint has changed drastically. 
which Todd attributed to advice from Jerry Sheehan of multi-state wholesaler Craft Brewers Guild. Don't be a mile wide and an inch deep. And he makes a lot of sense. You don't want to be widely distributed because it just causes a whole bunch of mess, a whole bunch of problems. If you're widely distributed, you need you need salespeople on. You need boots on the ground that cost money. You know, and you got to convince local people to buy your beer. So in 2005, Allagash sold 5,000 barrels while distributing to 26 states and Washington D.C. Today, Allagash distributes to 15 states. So they cut it by 10, 11 states, as well as Washington, D.C., Chicago, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh. They're just hitting major cities and other, other areas. And has seen its volume skyrocket since the mid-2000s. So that's just a lesson for you. I mean, Allagash makes awesome beer, but they're focused. And if you look at a map, um, you could see they were in all kinds of West Coast states. Um <clears throat> You know, they were all along the eastern seaboard. And then they were in Texas, like Nebraska. They were up in Oregon, Washington, and in California. Even the Midwest, they were there. They were in uh, Michigan and um, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Ohio. And now in 2020, they're just on the eastern uh, seaboard. They're not even in Pennsylvania. They're in Philadelphia, but that's a major city. And then they're just in, uh, not even all of California, just like the southern part of California. And they're selling 100,000 barrels, right? So they're focused, focused. And that's, I think, what you need to do if you're going to go bigger. Be focused on certain areas. Best focus is just to bring it all back and do a tap room and just draw people to you, like what these uh, California breweries are doing. San Diego County is killing They're making more money than, like, the San Diego Padres, right? Ridiculous. Drag, uh, you know, a magnet drawing people to them. That is your craft brew news. I'm sorry about this craft brew conference. It just, it's horrible. Um, I had such a great time last year. I was looking forward to it. And all the people that were supposed to be there and, and the, even the World Beer Cup that's canceled. I'm like, my God, come on. It's ridiculous. All right, anyway. That's life. So I can't even have a beer because I'm still on 75 hard. Uh, after April 3rd, I will have a beer and it will be okay. I'm on like day 54, but that's all right. Okay, that's what I have for you today. Hey, go on iTunes. Give us a rating. Give us a review. Please subscribe. That's the only way we get up in rankings. If you like what we're doing, if you like my ranting, I can give you more ranting if you want. Or send me an email, michael at craftbeerstorm.com. Let me know what your thoughts on this whole coronavirus thing. I was doing some work in the city, and they told me to stay home for like two weeks and work from home. I'm like, I don't care. If you pay me, I don't care. I'll be home. But just everybody's panicking. Nuts. Crazy. All right. Anyway, uh, that's what I got. And I hope you have a great weekend. Don't stay home from your brewery. They work hard. You got to go out there. Go out there and work from the brewery. They got Wi-Fi. That's what I might do. Just go there. All right. Love you guys. I will see you on Monday with another great episode. We're going to interview somebody. Take care.